My guest is Monica Aldama. She is the author of the new book, Full Out Lessons in Life and Leadership from America's Favorite Coach. She's also the star of the Emmy-nominated series Cheer on Netflix. I've watched it many times with my daughter. You can follow her on social media at Monica Aldama. Monica, thanks so much for joining me on Sports Business Radio. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I'm so inspired by your book. Um, I, I think it has so many lessons for everyone, whether it's young people, business people, parents. What inspired you to write your book? Well, you know, I've, this is my 27th year here at Navarro. So obviously with coaching comes a lot of um, a lot of experiences, a lot of lessons learned, not just from the kids, but from myself, a lot of ups, downs, wins, losses. And so every year I would just kind of joke around and say, uh, you know, I should write a book one day. I've got all of this great, you know, these great stories and stuff and um, just really more so joked about it, even though it was kind of in the back of my head. And then uh, the show came out and I had all of these people reaching out to me. Um, I had a lot of publishers reaching out to me. I had a lot of fans reaching out to me about, was I going to write a book? Have I written a book? And so, you know, I thought, well, this would be a really great opportunity to, you know, take that vision that I had that, you know, that I kind of joked about and actually make it happen. And then, of course, uh, we went into a pandemic. So I actually had a lot of time on my hands. It's interesting. I've had so many people on recently who have written books during the pandemic because they did have that extra time on their hands. It seems like, you know, that was an inspiration to kind of finally share their story. Yeah. I mean, it, it definitely um, was a good opportunity to have just quiet time. My life is so busy all the time. I really don't have a lot of, uh, I do have more, a little bit more downtime in the summer than than in the year, but it's just go, go, go. And especially since, you know, filming the show and then the show coming out and then some other, you know, opportunities that I've taken advantage of. I feel like if, if I'm not working and coaching here, then I'm working on another, um, you know, opportunity that I have. So it's just go, go, go. So for, for the pandemic to happen, you know, it, I, you know, although was awful it you know the blessing was to number one spend a lot of time with my family and the number two just to you know have some some quiet time in my life that I'm not really used to having cheer on Netflix was such a big hit um, give us a little bit of a behind the scenes I know in your book you talk about they spent 12 hours a day with you for several months what was that like and also, how has cheer changed your life? Um, well, yeah, it was, you know, definitely something to get used to. Uh, when they first approached me about it, they said, you know, we'll just be like a fly on the wall. Uh, you won't even know we're there. And although that was somewhat true in, in, the, in the manner of, you know, the first few days, it was a little awkward knowing that you're, you have a microphone on at all times. So everything you say is out there for the world to possibly hear. Um, and then, you know, you, I, I just remember the first day saying something and feeling something behind me and, you know, looking around and it's a camera. So I had to get used to that, but it really only took a few days and we were just so focused on our job, what we needed to do inside the gym that it, they really kind of did become a, a little bit of a, you know, fly on the wall, but because they were filming 12 hours a day, there was a lot of outside of practice filming, which that was not, not really a fly on the wall because that's interviews and them, you know, following in your daily life and, and in your office and in your space. So, you know, it was difficult. Um, <clears throat> it was a lot of work and, um, but you know, it, it was worth it. Um, how has it changed my life? I think, um, you know, my, I honestly did not think many people would watch the show because it, because it's cheerleading and that, because it does have such a stereotype with it, which hopefully the show has changed that. That was one of the reasons I wanted to do it, but, but it does have a stereotype of this, you know, mean girls and just pom-poms and stuff on the side. 
uh, I really did want to, uh, you know, hopefully have people see it and open them up to what we do and how athletic these kids are. But, but because of the stereotype, I really thought maybe just the cheer community would watch it. So it really took me by surprise how it just spread all over the entire world. So, um, you know, it's, it, it definitely has opened up opportunities, you know, for me to, you know, write this book and do some other things that I probably would not have taken advantage of, even though I've, you know, always kind of thought about different um, things that I could do in the business world. And um, it, you know, I, I feel like I've grown every single year that I coach, I've grown as far as, you know, adapting to the new generation and really trying to understand this younger generation and the kids and where they come from. And, and so I've always been open to growing and learning, but I think seeing it out there, seeing the home visits and stuff just takes it a little bit further. And so the ability to probably uh, really see things through their eyes, which I've always worked on anyways, I, you know, just trying to relate to this new generation. They are very different than, than how I grew up. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that. So uh, for our listeners, Monica has won 14 national championships at Navarro College. And you've been at Navarro for 26 years. You've seen a lot and you've had yeah. tremendous success, as, as much success as any coach in America today in any sport. And relating to the kids today. So I have a 16 year old. She's on the dance team at her high school. Things are so different now for the youngsters of today. I think social media has changed a lot. They've had to live through a pandemic where they've missed school and missed some of their extracurricular activities. You seem to connect so well with your team and you're kind of like a mother hen out there, but you also demand you know, success and you've built this amazing program there. So I guess my question is, as a parent, and also as someone who works with young people every day, what's the key to relating to young people today, Monica? You know, I really think that one of the biggest things that you can do, whether it's relating to young kids or just being successful in business or successful in a relationship or being a good mom or dad, I think it really starts with you because you have to lead by example. And I talk about that in the book, how important leading by example is, because if your kids don't respect you, if your partner doesn't respect you, if your employees don't respect you, if your teammates don't respect you, it's hard to be able to relate to anyone because you're just getting by, you know? So I think the, the first thing is, you know, that I have to make sure I'm leading by example, whatever I expect of them, mm -hmm. I expect of myself times a thousand, you know? And so number one, I want them to know I'm all in and I'm here. Every expectation I have for you, I'm going to live it. I'm going to have it for myself. Um, that way, then they can at least stop and listen. Okay, what are you trying to tell me? Because if I'm doing something completely different than what I'm asking of them, they're not even, we're not even going to be able to start. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that way I feel like then I can start trying to teach some of the lessons that I think are important that are really lost in this generation. I really do think this, this new generation, and I don't know what it is, but I do think there is a lot of entitlement and a little bit of a loss of discipline and, and accountability. And I think self-accountability is so important just to take ownership because none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. I will continue to make mistakes. And I try to tell them, you know, as long as you own that, like you're going to get a lot of respect, but trying to blame others and push other, you know, push the blame on other people and act like you didn't have any responsibility in what happened. Uh, it just makes people lose respect for you. So I think accountability, um, teaching them a self accountability, teaching them, you know, how to be kind to each other. And some of these just basic life principles um, to be good teammates, but also then go into other things like a relationship with your partner or um, how to be, you know, a good employee, just different things. And they all really have the same core things. Like I tell them, you, you want to lead by example. Your teammates aren't going to want to 
um, listen to you if you're not out there pushing and grinding exactly what you're wanting them to do. So I don't, you know, I just think a lot of that is lost. I don't know how it got lost. I don't know what happened. Hmm. You know, I grew up in a generation where there was a lot of discipline, a lot of respect for your, you know, just your teachers, your employees. There was a respect because that's who they were and you owed them at least that. Now, how much respect you gave them probably depended on that going back to, you know, leading by example and stuff. How much were they you know, earning from you. But I think at that, you know, minimum level, we showed respect to people just simply because they were in a in an authority position and there was expectations. And, and I think people in our generation, we did, um, we tried to do the things that were going to make us successful in school or, you know, do our homework or whatever, because that was expected of us. We didn't want to uh, we respected the rules. We respected the consequences for that. And I think a little bit of that's lost. So I really try to like teach them that just because the world they're growing up in is, it doesn't, you know, uh, honor those things that they could be the change that they could at least make themselves, you know, someone that can change whatever they're involved in, whether it's their workplace, their relationship, their parenting style or whatever. So I, I just think there's just core values that we can just teach, but it starts with us, obviously, making sure that we're following those same core values. I'll be the first one to say, you know what, let me take ownership of, of that practice that didn't go well, because I probably should have done this or, you know, so. Yeah, and I'm sure your team sees that and they respect you more. One of the chapters of your new book that really resonated with me is the chapter about you got divorced from your high school sweetheart and then you got remarried to your high school sweetheart and the lessons you learned about communication and just marriage and parenting. Yeah. And gosh, I, I could really relate to that chapter. There's a very personal chapter of the book. You could easily left that out. Why do you decide to include that in the book? You know, I, I am a very private person and that was one of the things that you, when the, when the producers of the show reached out to me, that, that made me a little bit hesitant because I, I didn't really know if I wanted to open myself up to the world, like, you know, in that manner. But I just remember when I went through my divorce, I was very vulnerable and I just learned so much about myself. I really leaned in on my faith to get through that time. It was very difficult. And I just thought, you know, this is, this is really worth talking about because I feel like it was so many people could relate and could probably benefit from, um, you know, what I had to say about it. So I wasn't ashamed. And I think, I don't think you should ever be ashamed of any failures that you have because obviously that was a you know a failure we 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 got divorced but but I wanted to also do better be better learn from it and get back to the place where I could grow from it and and I just thought that was such a valuable lesson and you know I actually spoke about that when I was on Dancing with the Stars one of the packages that we had was about our divorce and I had a lot of people reach out to me I'd already written a about it so I knew that it was going to be in the book but um, it, it just it goes to show that that really there's a chapter for everyone because whether it's you're a young child and you need that chapter about positive self-talk and you know making sure you have confidence in yourself or you're in a relationship and you need to learn how to communicate better um, you know it isn't just about you know leadership it's about really all those things that create success in all areas of your life. So uh, I'm really glad that I opened myself up, but I, I've honestly, since I got divorced, I knew it was important to talk about. Hmm. I had Sue Bird on with me recently, WNBA star, Olympic champion, WNBA champion. She's won lots of different championships. And I asked her about winning and climbing the mountain over and over again to motivate yourself to continue to win. So I would ask you that same question, 14 national championships. A lot of people after one or two would have said, hey, this is great. I don't need to work as hard anymore. 
Yeah. You not only have done this 14 times, but you're in a sport where perfection is pretty much required. There's there's yeah. very mar- very little margin for error. How do you yeah. continue to climb that mountain, Monica, where you get your yourself and your team up over and over and over again? Well, you know, I definitely, I mean, I could have stopped a long time ago. I I did what that what I wanted to do to prove that I could take this program to another level. I've done that. At this point, you know, I because I did pretty much build this program from the bottom, I feel like it's my baby. You know, this is my program. I've put everything that I've had into it. And I'm not ready to pass the torch yet. You know, I'm still invested in it. And I no longer do it for myself. Not that I only did it for myself before, but, you know, I do it for uh, the kids, the community, the college. I I uh, don't want to disappoint anyone. And I think that's a driving uh, motivation for me on a daily. I definitely am a pleaser. I do not like to disappoint anyone. So if it requires me to work harder, work longer, whatever, you know, I, I definitely put my best foot forward in order to achieve these goals so that the kids who've never won before can win and have that feeling. I can teach them different lessons to, you know, maybe put them on a path that they never even knew that they wanted to be on in in their future. So um, it's definitely very, very difficult, but I just, I'm I'm not ready to pass the torch yet, so. I love the end of cheer, spoiler alert. (laughs) You win and they get to go in the ocean. Yeah. And you could just see the tears and the emotion when they won and they're in the ocean with each other. It seems like like the vision map is win and get to the ocean. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a a big part of, you know, it, it's it's not about a piece of metal, as you know, with anything. It's about even the small little steps of success in practice, where you learn a new skill, where you hit your first pull out for the first time. Um, all of these feelings that. Um, you know, where you're, you're just on that high, that dopamine is at an all time high. These are those feelings you're pushing for to constantly improve and be better. So it's not about a piece of metal, you know, it's about constantly uh, having these small successes with obviously this big, huge success as the final goal. So, uh, you know, running out into the ocean, it's just that moment of I did it all, all the sacrifice, all the hard work, you know, was worth it. Um, and I think we all put our uh, energy into anything for, for those moments of that feeling of success and being proud of yourself. Again, you're in a sport where practice requires repetition, repetition, repetition until you get it perfect. And I know you're not saying on that where, <laughs> and maybe you can share that with our audience. You talk about it in the book, but I think it's so important, not only for sports, but for business or for life. If you prepare for success and perfection and you do it over and over again, it becomes habit, right? Correct. You know, you're building that muscle memory. You're, you're building that trust. You're building that confidence. It's about a whole bunch of different things. We want, you know, cheerleading is so mental at times. You can, you, you start getting in your head and the more confidence you're building, the more time you know you keep going until you get it right and then you keep going until you can't get it wrong that is definitely what those reps are about is building that confidence and building that consistency to where you feel so good about what you're able to do that all you have to do is go out there and perform and enjoy that moment because you've put the work in you know you don't have to worry about you've put the work in before you got there yeah I mean you can tell and and the thing that really stood out to me with the documentary on Netflix is these are elite athletes. You know, it used to be, as it said at the beginning of the series, cheerleading was some pyramids and you were yeah. for other athletes. The athletes who are cheerleaders and dancers, again, as I've seen in my own home with my daughter, this is like grueling. You're battling through injuries. There's grit and grind that I had never seen before. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, Greg Whiteley, the the creator of the show, he was the creator of Last Chance You, and he said, you know, in one of his interviews that these were the toughest athletes he had ever filmed before. And that was, you know, an honor for him to say that, but they, they truly were blown away. I mean, coming in and filming and not really seeing the level that we were at in person before, you know, it took them a moment to get adjusted. We kind of took their breath away quite a few times until they got adjusted to what we were doing. And you're looking at like thousands of hours of footage that they captured and they're drilling it down to six episodes. That must have been so hard. Were you involved in the editing process or did you not see it till it was all done? No, I had no clue, you know, what it would turn out like. I, I just trusted them. I, I was very proud of the program and how hard we work. And, you know, when they reached out to me, I said, of course, I would love for you to uh, do a you know a docu series on our program. I'm very proud of it. These kids work so hard, and I don't think that people even understand what you know kind of grit and determination and athleticism that they have. So, and I don't think Greg did either. I think they they thought they knew, but mm -hmm. they really didn't. You know, and I, I had no I had no uh, part in the editing. So okay, um, I you know. I had no idea what it was going to come out as just a chance you take. <laughs> I would be quite certain that since that has come out and even before that came out, there have been bigger universities that have come to you and said, you've won routinely every year. We want you to come coach at our school. You continue to stay at Navarro. What is the attraction to staying at Navarro? And again, like you said earlier in our conversation, you've built this with your own two hands from the ground up. Yes. And I mean, that's, this is, this is my, it's my baby. It's my program. And I can't see myself honestly ever coaching um, any other program. I didn't go into, as you, you know, read in my book, mm -hmm. I, you know, went to school for business finance. And I always thought as a, you know, in high school and college that I would be in the business world. I thought for sure I would be in the finance world, you know, somewhere. And this just kind of fell into my lap. And even then I thought, well, I'll just do it for a short term. But I absolutely, I've, I've always been very passionate about cheerleading. I love, you know, everything about it. I've always been athletic. I've always been competitive. So it wasn't hard for me to get pulled in to, you know, into the uh, passion of it. I, you know, I kind of set my goals for business to the side. And, uh, you know, if I ever did not coach at Navarro, I think that it would be because I was doing something. I was just exploring, you know, that business avenue that I uh, went to school for or something like that. I don't think I would want to, like I said, I've already proved to myself that I could do what I wanted to do with the program. So I continue to do it for the community, the kids in the school. So at that point, you know, I, I, I could just pursue other things. And I don't think that I would want to go to another school. I mean, I'll tell you this, from where I sit, what you've built is so impressive because it's not at University of Texas. It's not at <laughs> USC or UCLA or, you know, Florida or somewhere like that. It's a lot harder to do it with your budget and with the constraints on your university than it is at one of those huge schools where there's a lot more donors and there's a lot more money flowing in oh, absolutely, so absolutely. Done is I mean, remarkable yeah we don't have that big game day experience to recruit under we're simply recruiting under hard work and determination mm -hmm. you know you come here we promise you you'll get hard work determination and a lot of great life lessons you know so so my daughter had a question and i have yes. to include it or else she'll she'll kill me <laughs> so again she watched cheer she's watched it seven times now oh my I've goodness <laughs> Um, you know, she loves all the characters, including you, but one of the questions she had, and again, she's a dancer, um, Morgan got hurt on the show. I think she fractured her ribs and she wanted to continue to compete. So my daughter's question is, how do you protect athletes from themselves when they want to compete so badly? They want to be there for you. They want to be there for their teammates. 
but sometimes you have to say, you know what, you got to sit down because you're hurt and you're risking your long-term health. Correct. Um, you know, the good thing is we have, um, an athletic training staff that we depend on to make those kinds of decisions. Mm -hmm. And um, they do send the kids to, you know, to the doctor to have x-rays or MRIs or whatever it is that, that needs to be done. Uh, I don't make those decisions. I, I, I mean, obviously for dramatic effect, the editing some kind of, sometimes can be, you know, leave out some things, right. but uh, to where it looks like, Monica forced somebody to do something and I'm I would never I'm very we are actually a very cautious program I know it showed every single fall that we had but it didn't show the 1000 times that we hit everything right, correctly so you know I mean um you didn't see what you don't see in the show is all the progressions we do building up to, to the more difficult skills and the safety precautions that we take um, there were definitely times that I have to force people to sit down. Uh, so, you know, the, we have a saying kind of, are you hurt or are you hurting? Uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of us are hurting because we're worked out really hard the day before, or we're pushing ourselves, you know, really hard, especially during Daytona season, you're going to, your body's going to feel it, you know, but if you're hurt, we want to make sure that we're taking the right steps to, to get you better and to not injure you or put you in a situation. And so, because I'm not obviously educated enough in that area and certain things to make those decisions, I don't, you know, I, we, we send everyone to the uh, training staff. They send them to either a doctor or if, if they can't handle the, this, you know, whatever it is at that point. But, um, so yeah, we are actually very cautious with any of that. And I think, yes, there's a time when you have to push. And especially if we're in competition season and, and if the doctors say uh, it's not going to hurt them any further, but it's going to hurt, well, then you might be in some pain pushing through for the next week or so, you know? So yeah, there are those situations, but once again, it's always by guidance from the professional in that area, which is not sure. me. <laughs> Two more questions before we wrap. Number one, in your book, you talk about inspirations and, you know, whether it's your family or uh, people you grew up with when you were in cheer, but I love the story that you tell about Taylor Swift and yes. maybe you would share some of that story with our listeners. Cause I think it's such a great story when, you know, by hosting this show for 18 years, I've met some of my inspirations and when yes. you got to connect with her, I bet that was a pretty cool thing for you. Yes, I mean, I've always admired, uh, you know, Taylor Swift. Her, I've, obviously, I'm a Swifty. Yes, I, <laughs> I think every song is great. Uh, so since she was, you know, I just remember her first coming on the scene and thinking, okay, this is this young girl is interesting. You know, she's in the country genre. I love country. Uh, she moved over into pop and just every decision that that she makes to me and I've been to all of her concerts so she's she's really a genius creatively um obviously business minded because she has she, you know she drops an album and nobody even knows she's working on it right. I mean just some of the decisions that she that she makes uh, you know because a lot of times you're talented in one area but you might not be the most business you know minded person so you depend on other people but she really you know drives her own car in this you know journey of hers and she makes all these really brilliant decisions you know which I said is you know like the title of her album fearless I feel like she is truly fearless and to me that's very inspirational because that's the kind of person that I want to be I want to be great at my craft but I also want to be very business minded I want to be you know a genius in all the areas, not just, you know, one, one lane. And um, yeah. So when her um, publicist reached out to me and I actually just got, uh, so she sent me her PR box for Cardigan when she dropped the album last year. And then she just dropped her new album, Red, the Taylor's version. And I got an, I got another PR box. I got her, uh, I got a sweater and some other things from, from her. And that I wasn't expect. I was kind of expecting the other because her publicist had said Taylor was going to wanted to send you a gift, and I was like, okay, 
okay. But, uh, you know, that was a year and a half ago. So I was so excited. So, so I'm going to send Taylor my book. That's fantastic. Well, yeah. I hope you guys meet in person someday because it's all yes, me too. <laughs> to meet your inspiration in person. All right. Last question. My daughter and my audience will kill me if I don't ask it. Is there going to be another season of cheer or are we done with cheer? Can you tell me, can you give a hint or is that stay tuned? Um, that is by the time that this, your audience gets to hear this, they are going to know that, yes, there is a season two coming out very soon. Excellent. Well, I think <laughs> my daughter and, and many, many people and myself will be very excited to watch season two of Cheer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot happening. It's a lot going on. I, I mean, obviously, I don't know, but I, I, I actually lived it. So I know it's, it was a tough year. <laughs> it was a tough year. So you're up for doing it again, huh? <laughs> yeah you mean another you mean next year another season or this coming year another season or just yeah. we'll see okay all right <laughs> so i want to tell everyone go out and get full out lessons in life and leadership from america's favorite coach monica i loved your book like i said as a parent as a business person um as someone who's been involved in sports and business like it's just a great read it's one of my Thank favorites so much. of the year. I'm going to add it to the shelf behind me. Many of the people who wrote the books behind me have been on this show. So I'm going to add your book behind me so everyone can see it when I do my interviews in the future. But just a uh, tremendous job by you. And, you know, I, I found your book really relatable and just continued success to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Monica Aldama, you can follow her on social media at Monica Aldama. Monica, thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too.